Is it fish? Oh, yes. Oh, I lost him. Welcome back to Fishing Tutorials. This video is an introduction to float fishing on flowing water. Stick around to learn more about this effective and enjoyable tactic. I'm excited because I'm back on the River Severn, one of my favorite rivers in the UK. And whilst in previous trips, I've been feeder fishing for barbel and chub, today I'm actually fishing the float, a tactic that I haven't used on this river before. But I found a lovely spot, reasonable depth, nice, a walking pace current and I think this spot could do a few bites today. I'm float fishing today because I got a brand new rod the other day, a 13 foot uh, Aventus float rod. I have been dying to try it out. As well as that, I also just wanted to get my eye in again. Float fishing is something that I did a lot of when I was a kid, but haven't done so much of lately. So, you know, getting back into it and trying to bag up on, on chub and barbel was, was definitely the aim of the day. Pellets, hemp seed, and good old maggots. Hopefully the sunlight has come around a little bit and I'll actually be able to see the water without squinting. Oh, I'm straining my eyes already. I think if I, if I catch anything, it'll be, it'll be a, a result. And if I catch anything big, I'll go home very happy. When you're just getting into float fishing and just starting out, it's probably easiest to start on a lake or pond. Having static water, which is the same depth each time you cast in, makes it a little bit easier to get used to it, makes it a little bit easier to grasp the, the concept of float fishing. However, then once you've kind of mastered float fishing on a lake, stepping up to a stream or river like this is, is the ultimate sort of leveling up. When you hook a fish on a river like this, there's a lot of current. So even a small fish can properly bend the rod round and take line. Dace and stuff, you can land them quite easily, but you know about it when you've got something a little bit bigger. Right, let's get a little bit of out. If I get a barbel on the float, I'll lose my mind. I haven't had a barbel on the float for about five years. See, when the sun goes in, I can see the float easy. Got no issues once the sun goes in. Are you serious? Is that a fish? Oh my goodness. That's gone. That's gone on my first cast. <laughs> Are you witnessing this? Is this happening? I just said I'd be happy if I catch one good fish today. But I've just hooked something quite big. What is it gonna be? A, a nice chub would, would make me very happy. You know what? That's a barbel. That's a flipping barbel. Is it in the net? Yes, it's in. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> I just caught a barbel on my first cast. Float fishing on the River Severn. The first time I put a bait on, I barely fed anything. I just trotted the float through the swim and I caught myself a barbel. That is amazing. The float fishing that I've done on lakes tends to revolve around catching roach, bream, perch, and sometimes carp. You turn up and you know you're gonna get bites because there's loads of fish been stocked into it. And whilst I enjoy that style of fishing, and it's particularly good when I'm taking beginners with me or I'm showing people, introducing them to fishing, it's kind of guaranteed bites. Coming out here onto a natural venue is just a level up. You can't be certain what it is exactly you're fishing for, because the stock changes. What's in this stretch today could be further upstream or downstream tomorrow. And that is so exciting. These fish behave like fish naturally behave. They're wary of disturbance and noise, but you give them some food, you start introducing maggots, hemp, on a regular basis, you can draw a shoal of fish in and you can get them really competing for the bait. And it's when they start feeding hard and they're sort of fighting for the maggots as they float past, that's when you're gonna start getting bites. And sometimes, lots of them. Here is my float fishing swim for the day. I got myself all set up nice and neat. My bait, access school, landing net, keep net, which is 
got a chub in it. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. That's a little bit more like what I was expecting to catch today. I love it. You feel at one with the river when you're stood up to your waist in it. That's got to be a chub, I think. Not a bad chub, that one. <laughs> bit of maggot, bit of hemp, and I'm feeding a pouch of maggot and a pouch of hemp every cast. Now that bait that I just put in, I will follow down with my float. It's a fish. Oh, yes. Oh, I lost him. Nearly. That's a fish. The trick when you're netting the fish on the river is to draw them upstream and let them sort of go down into the net. Not quite as big as the barbel, but we're catching. We're catching it. Oh, it's some fishing line. Now, what would be funny would be if I hooked a really big barbel and I'm battling it for a while and then the drone runs out of battery. Yes! Fish! Can't believe I had a barbel first cast. That was a joke. That was so funny. Oh. You know what's happened? Are you serious? It's running out of battery. You're gonna have to take the rod. <laughs> it does that and it's like, doesn't have much time left. So I've got to land it when the beeper starts. We've got cameraman on uh, on rod duties whilst I land the drone. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey. We'll call this one a, uh, a joint effort, shall we? <laughs> The drone ran out of batteries. I had to land it. Thankfully, I had a helping hand. We had to land the drone and land the fish. <laughs> For me and many other people, float fishing was the way I got into angling. The concept of watching a little red float bob down river and then suddenly pull under when a fish takes the bait is something that many, many people can relate to. And it just draws excitement because who can't be excited about a fish tugging on the end of the line and watching that float go under? I think of times when I was younger and I used to fish matches and this sort of fishing was more, you know, something I did more often. The night after a match, I'd, I'd be in bed, fall asleep and then suddenly just wake up to the vision of a float dipping under and I'd be like, strike. <laughs> That's how much float fishing as a style of angling has captivated me over the years. Ooh. For some reason that looked really big then, but it, I don't think it is. I don't know why that looked so... Oh, it's because it's a nice chub. Oh. <laughs> Woke up a bit then. Yeah, it is bigger. I don't know if it's the biggest of the day. Man, just putting up a scrap, this one. Please don't come off now. It's quite nerve wracking when you're using light float tackle and small hooks. Every fish is an exciting battle. Come on, Ed. Let me get. That's a very healthy looking chub as well, that one. Just like the perfect river fish, that is. That is stunning. I've landed maybe six or seven chub so far today, and in my opinion, that's a brilliant day out, but I really want to catch a quality barbel. There's nothing better than when that rod bends right round and you hook into something altogether different, something that hugs the bottom, slowly swims upstream. There's a thrill uh, involved with hooking a big barbel on the float, and I'm just hoping that before the day is out, I can get one. Please be a barbel. That was a bit further up the swim, like right up the top where I, I where I had the barbel earlier. Nice chub. It's like I'm quite enjoying getting the chub or maggot, but 
part of me is like, come on, one big barbel would just be amazing. I think I'm going to probably chop off a few cubes of spam and then give it a go. There we go. There we go. Or is it a snag? I've got weed, haven't I? That would have been too good. Come on, fish. I only wanted one more bite. Too much to ask for. Currently, just keep hooking into weeds on the bottom. I've tried to make my rig a little bit deeper so I can try and find a barbel with the, the spam on the hook, but so far all it's been doing is resulting in snagging the bottom. Come on, fishies. Where are you? It was also hectic early on in the day. Loads of chub, loads of bites. This afternoon it is slowing right off. If I can nick one more fish though, I'll be happy. Especially if it's a barbel. I think I've caught enough chub now. I'm gonna try and work your bait through the swim quite slow when you're trying to catch barbel. It helps if it's going down as slow as you can get away with, but if you slow it down too much, the bait rides up in the water. Missed it. Try and get my bait going down in amongst that big sheet. Fish, what's it gonna be? Oh, ooh, <laughs> ooh. I mean, it's barely moving. It's just holding deep at the moment. I can't really gain anything on it. Ah, uh, this is gonna be a barbell, I think. <laughs> it's swimming up river. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, he's woken up. I switched to a bit of spam. A tiny cube of spam. I put on a slightly bigger hook with some stronger line. And we're into a barbel. Unbelievable. Come on. Woohoo! I love that. Oh, the float, man. So cool. That was what we were after. Finally, got myself another barbel. At the beginning of the day, I was concerned that I might be quite rusty. Float fishing, active styles of fishing like this is the sort of thing that I used to do when I was younger and haven't done a lot of it in recent years. But this has been the perfect day to get back into it. I've had loads of bites, kept the bait going in, enjoyed just the most beautiful surroundings, and I've caught a whole load of fish along the way. Goodbye, chub. If you enjoyed this video and want to master float fishing on rivers yourself, check out the in-depth tutorial on screen now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get away. Yeah. Stop being naughty. <laughs> That's going in. <laughs>